Throughout the imagery and understanding section of Fun to Imagine with Richard Feynman, he talks about imagining different concepts and how people are able to understand such concepts, such as counting and keeping track of time without a clock simultaneously, and how the average person can understand difficult concepts like quantum mechanics. There are no people who are able to magically learn anything. If the average person is dedicated enough, they can imagine any concept. They are people that are interested in a certain field, such as electromagnetic fields, that practice and study to become as good as possible in the field. Anyone who puts in a lot of time and thinking in math is now a scientist. When working hard, it's difficult to describe what the other things I worry about are. The example used by Feynman is the chicken and the egg, wondering which came first. It comes fast and quickly, and it's hard to tell what is coming to head, but it's a combination of equations and solutions. They all come together to make an image in the mind. The words and equations used are not very well separated at all. They are difficult to tell apart and hard to describe how the images are formed. The images that appear in every person's head when they're speaking and listening will always be different. These images are sometimes full images or only partial images. We all have a large translation scheme going on inside our heads that works differently to translate what goes on in our minds. The translation becomes even more complex as we talk on more int intricate levels with new vocabulary. In order to test the human time sense, Feynman would count to 48, but it would take roughly one minute. The more he repeated this experiment, the closer he got to being accurate, and every time he would count one minute, but in 48 seconds rather than 60. After lots of practice, every time he counted 48 ticks, it was very close to one minute. Feynman later attempted to figure out what affected his sense of time, and if he was able to do anything else while counting to further improve and test his ability. One of the tasks he tried, as an example, was counting socks while doing his laundry. He had difficulty to count the socks when the counting machine was used, therefore he learned how to recognize the number of socks by pattern. He also used this counting ability to count the number of lines in a newspaper. He did so by grouping the lines together, and when counting to 48, he knew that that was one minute and exactly how many numbers of lines of text there were. After mastering the ability to read and keep track of time, Internally, Feynman attempted to speak while keeping track of time internally. His plans to speak and keep time did not go well at first. Feynman was unsuccessful to count and speak. When he tried to do so, all that ran through his mind was the counting, and he wouldn't speak. The problem with speaking while simultaneously counting ticks in one's head off, off of regular time is that the mind has trouble to imagine the three concepts all at once. John Tukey will later prove that a theory of speaking is not as difficult as it seems. He said, I don't see why you have any difficult, difficulty talking whatsoever, claiming to not have any difficulties with speaking at all. His calibration number was 62, the number used as a ticker to keep track of one minute, while Feynman's was 48. Tukey proceeded to speak about Mary had a little lamb and kept going on and on about other topics, stopping to announce the time had been one minute, proving his earlier statement. When asked about his method for keeping track of time, he visioned a tape with numbers on it. Therefore, instead of having to keep track of numbers and counting in the way Feynman did, Tukey was able to imagine and vision the numbers. This allowed Tukey to see the numbers and not a, use a voice in his head. A voice in the way Feynman would cause confusion when speaking or reading. Whereas vision of the numbers does not interfere in speaking, making the feat possible for Tukey. Feynman and Tukey were able to complete the opposite tasks of each other. Feynman could read with ease, while Tukey could speak with ease. This difference in ability is attributed to the ways each of the men imagining their clock differently. Since Tukey had to see his imaginary clock reading, it became harder since the text impeded his ability to view his clock. Meanwhile, for Feynman, his internal ticker was based on voice speaking the numbers to him. Therefore, while speaking, his own voice could not speak about both at the same time, leading to problems speaking. This quick and simple experiment done between the two men shows just how differently people think. When learning mathematics, physics, or anything else, everybody imagines and pictures the concepts differently in their minds. This is why certain people find it easier to understand a given topic, but you may find the topic more difficult to understand and comprehend. This is how the mind works to translate and understand different topics and concepts. The mind has different ways to effectively imagine and picture different concepts, which are shown in two different examples by Feynman and Tukey. This can also be compared to how some people prefer to talk aloud when thinking 
or reading, while other people prefer to do, do it in silence in their head without any noise. These are both ways to think and can both be used effectively to achieve the same goal. To sum up what Feynman explained throughout the imagery and understanding section in Fun to Imagine is that people are able to take anything said to them and what they read and imagine it indifferently in their minds. Whether it is a way of counting off time while reading or speaking, or ways to count and organize socks effectively, each person has their own effective way of imagining any concept in their mind.